Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to be talking about team games. 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. So we're not going to be talking about 1v1. We're going to be ranking after the new patch how things are shaking out in the team game meta and how I feel their current strength is within a tier list format. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so obviously we had a patch uh, about a week ago or so where they did some major adjustments, some things that have really changed how the game is being played. Professional Scouts got a big change, uh, so it's not functioning at, at a high level like it used to be. Uh, it, the, the Scouts are actually able to be contested. Uh, they move a lot slower after picking up a carcass. Uh, we, we had a lot of things change uh, about Fire Lancers. They used to be a crazy thing in team games. They're still strong, but they're not nearly as prevalent as they were. And uh, obviously the Mongol uh, Tower Rushers are still going to be a thing, but they're not quite as strong because they cost more and mongols start with less wood and then a big change for how team games uh were being played is the adjustment to the ruse horse archer uh they were in every game spamming hundreds of horse archers uh that has now uh really slowed down a little bit ruse horse archers are still pretty good uh but you don't see them in just every game both teams having someone spam uh, horse archers. It's not uh, nearly as common as it used to be. So given uh, these things going on, we're going to take a look and re-rank things. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Again, I'm not going to put anybody in the F tier. Um, uh, so spoiler alert, I am going to put Abbasid in the C tier uh, because I think when you compare them to other civs, they just don't quite uh, pack as much of a punch on a consistent basis. But that being said, I'm not going to put them in the F tier because uh, you, you still can get good results with them. Uh, they have really good Ram rushes. I, I've lost to teams that have like Abbasid English and they do like a spear, a longbow, super fast ram rush and, and, and kill somebody. So they do have options. They do have a really good upgrade to pump out cheap villagers so they can boom pretty decent. Uh, but all in all, when you start splitting hairs and comparing them to all the civs in the game, they are going to be the only civ that I put in the C tier for team uh, game rankings. Then as we move up to the B tier, at the bottom of the B tier, I'm going to put English. Uh, now, this is not to say English are trash and they can never uh, be super strong. They actually she can uh within the first 10 or 15 minutes of a game english is very good they're very defensive uh it's hard to punish them uh they're gonna have that network of castles bonus uh with their godly longbows uh, and their godly town center that's basically a machine gun so they're very hard to punish and push early in the game and they can also be super aggressive and do some very cool strategies uh, with ram rushes and sniping villagers around your edges. And, and having the best archers in the game is obviously something that's going to be very strong until about late castle age or so. So uh, English, definitely not in a bad spot, but I am going to put them at the bottom of the B tier. And the next I am going to put Delhi just above them. Uh, Delhi uh, sliding up. I believe they were in the C tier the last time I did this. They've gotten some fixes to uh, some bugs that were w within their civilization and their research times are a lot uh, more viable now. Uh, Delhi is actually really good on river maps with their fishing boats that can attack. And uh, elephants are a very strong castle age unit. They're going to drop off a little bit in Imperial. And maybe in 4v4, where the maps are just obscenely huge, elephants might fall off a little bit. But 2v2, 3v3, especially in the lower elos, elephants are, are one of the best castle age units in the game. Extremely impactful, uh, especially with now that we have animation canceling and all that shenanigans going on. Delhi can be very, very good uh, in, in a lot of different situations. So they are sliding up now after the patch, and they almost could go into A tier. I probably would put them into A tier, uh, but the maps are just so massive on 4v4. Uh, they probably would be A tier for like 3v3, though, only. Uh, I believe 2v2, it can get a little bit crazy and a little bit too hyper-aggressive uh, with like French and English and stuff. So maybe they wouldn't quite be in the A tier, uh, A -tier uh, in 2v2. But they're very close, and, and they're definitely A tier on some maps, maybe even S tier. And then after that, everybody is going to be A or S tier, which is uh, very surprising and, and means a very good job by the developers so far based on how new this game is and how many different civilizations it has. This isn't StarCraft with three different 
races or factions or whatever there's eight different civilizations for them to get balanced so uh all in all uh, uh so far obviously some things that need to be changed but heading in the right direction we're gonna go uh with hre here uh in the a tier and i almost want to put them higher because they are a crazy late game sieve uh but i believe that's more in 1v1 they're ridiculous uh late game when they get their regnets with three uh relics and they're they're just off and rolling with all of their sacred sites and relics and their ambient income uh that's just infinite and piling into their base um so you know you can do some cool things in team games uh where you just got to get your hre to that point so you'll see teams going like professional scouts and dropping off deer for their hre everybody kind of defending the hre and and helping them uh, support them to get to late game because they are so insane once they get to that point and they can start slinging gold the teammates and stuff uh, helping them get their relics so definitely an insanely strong option in the uh, in the team game structure and if you make it to 15 minutes in the game boom HRE is definitely S tier at that point but you can't really do a whole lot of early game aggression uh, and, and you are going to be susceptible to, to seceding map control and stuff like that to the enemy team for that first 10 or 15 minutes or so so definitely very solid and uh going right into the a tier next up i'm going to go with the roos so the roos dropping from uh, the top of the s tier about in team games obviously because of how ridiculously fast they could get castle age and uh with roos being structured around uh getting a lot of value from their bounty system with uh sheep and deer and huntables wolves all the stuff on the map obviously when you get into 3v3 and 4v4 there's a ton of that stuff on the map so roos can really get to their maxed out 500 bounty way easier and way faster and when they get to 500 bounty roos is insanely strong so uh couple that with going fast castle and then spamming out hundreds of horse archers all over the map and trading efficiently versus any unit in the game that's why roost was so amazing but now that horse archers are performing about how they should i think uh roost is is still going to be very strong uh and on river maps water maps with their ability the, the, the crazy things they can do on water with uh with transitioning ships to whatever they need uh fishing boats not having to go back to the dock definitely still in a very good place as a sieve they're not a trash can now uh i don't believe they were over nerfed they, they they can still do uh crazy booms by just using their uh their age two landmark to click a couple times and boom you got stone uh they, they can still produce scouts which right now uh there's lots of scout cheese going on massing scouts to go take down other teams docks or go harass somebody's villagers you can really team up on one person send two or three people that mass scouts and really be a pain on them and, and roost can get uh participate in that early game mass scout meta better than anybody obviously by being able to produce them from their uh from their hunting cabin so they are still definitely strong and they belong in the a tier and then next i'm going to go with the french uh they're just solid they're, there's really nothing to change or say uh from my last tier list uh I believe the game should kind of be balanced around French. Uh, if 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 somebody's worse than French, maybe they need a little bit of love. If they're better than French, maybe they need a little bit of a nerve. I think French is just kind of that staple, consistent sieve uh, that would be a good balanced barometer uh, of all the civilizations around them because they're just they're strong on water, they're strong on land. They've got economic bonuses, they've got cool military bonuses with the super uh, knights that they have that can heal themselves. So there's just so many different ways that you can kind of play French and get consistent value out of them. Producing villagers at a faster rate, uh, especially as you age up, is, is a super handy and consistent bonus as well. Uh, they are, you can basically never go wrong having a French on your team because having the best knights in the game in a team games where the maps are bigger and they really revolve around having mobility and speed, you can't go wrong having the best knights in the game on your side. So French, just a very solid staple pick uh, and having one on your team is usually a good idea uh, to, to run around with those knights and cannons late game. And I'm going to be moving Chinese down from the S tier to the A tier uh, with the, the the slight change to Fire Lancers. They, they aren't going to do uh, as crazy, ridiculous of a torch damage as they used to, but they did get a little bit more HP. So Fire Lancers are still very strong. Uh, they just can't quite eliminate people as fast as they used to. And in the team games that I'm experiencing, uh, Chinese is not quite as popular anymore and Fire Lancers are definitely not as popular anymore just after that slight adjustment but they're still a very good unit um uh, you know in team games uh, a lot of times it, there's massive siege balls versus each other and chinese has the best siege so they've got to be ranked high their 2tc song boom 
can crank out villagers. They can smash out their amazing Zhuganu unit uh, and just crank out crazy uh, numbers of stuff. Villagers, units in that like 10 to 20 minute window where they're so strong. And then late game when they get into Imperial uh, with, with those ridiculous bombards from the Clock Tower Siege being, uh, being supervised by an Imperial official. Obviously... Chinese, super strong. Uh, once you get to, again, kind of like HRE, once you get to like that 15 minute mark in the game, they really ramp up and they're going to take off. Uh, and you really want them to mass up like 10 of those bombards late game. It's going to help you out so much. And <laughs> you already know what's coming. Uh, we're going to put Mongols in the S tier. Uh, obviously, uh, they are clearly the most overpowered civilization in 1v1, and they are still god tier in team games as well. That that value does transition over. Uh, so Mongols can do super cool things on the huge team game maps. They can go the silver tree and like literally just have infinite resources. It, it's so crazy that like when I've got a, a, a Mongol teammate uh, with the silver tree boom and that we help them get up and rolling, they can literally just sling thousands of resources to everybody on the team. Just it's like they can basically, uh, they can't send it fast enough to, to, to pump resources to our team once we get them up and rolling and it's trade, so it's infinite. They've got Mangadai, who they can produce a, a, a little clump of 10 to 12 Mangadai in H2 and just make the other team panic and, and have to chase Mangadai around. They can do Tower Rush, so if you're cheesing, it's it's fun to have Mongols on your team. The Uvu is still ridiculous. It didn't get nerfed or anything in the last patch, so they can crank out those two-for-one units via the Uvu, so, which is basically just having extra villagers at their disposal. So just when you wrap it all up in a ball uh, with, with being amazing early, game to cheese docks and do tower rushes and, and siege people's bases with the late game ridiculous boom resource generation of the of the silver tree with the insane mobility that they get all over these huge maps via their uh their network of all their outposts everywhere and one of their biggest downfalls as a sieve being that they can't build walls but oh well, you've got teammates that can wall for you. So one of the biggest downfalls is mitigated. So you're really getting most of the strengths of the Mongols even exacerbated because on bigger maps, the Silver Tree is going to bring in more resources per minute, making them even stronger on their late game boom. And then you can just have your teammates wall and you're okay. You're a Mongol who gets the benefit of walls. So yeah, they're, they're, they're S tier. They are God tier. Uh, they are ridiculous. In a 3v3 or 4v4 uh, game, you're going to want a Silver Tree Mongol uh, trying to get to that point where they are booming up like crazy and able to kind of sling the whole team and build a wonder and, and just kind of uh, be off and running and uh, collecting your profits there. So that is going to be how I rank everything right now. Um, so obviously... Abbasid, like they're not as they're not like they're not F tier. They're not as bad as everybody really thinks. You you can get value out of them. They do need a little bit of love though to have as much bonuses and as much punch as some of these other civilizations in the game. But other than that, I think it's in a pretty good spot. Once they finally figure out what to do with Mongols and get their winning percentage down around 50% like the other civs in the game, you want to get all this. It's never going to be 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 across the board, but you want to get every civ in like that 48 to 52 range in 1v1. And really the only outliers of that right now are mainly Mongols and Abbasid. So we've got to get some adjusting uh, done for the bottom and the top of this and then we'll have most people kind of in that B and A tier uh, and have a pretty functional functionable eight civilization game uh, even when it comes to team games and stuff like this so uh, yeah that's going to be how I rank things for 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 uh, based on the maps being bigger and some of the different synergies and strategies that we have going on but let me know what you think down below and don't forget to subscribe on your way out because I'll be doing lots of content like this to kind of keep you in the loop of how the team game meta is shaping up and uh, and all that sort of stuff so yeah as always, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.